Hello, it's a different video. Uh, tonight we've just come out of a meeting with lots of West Ham bloggers and vloggers, many that you'll know, and these are Mother Brown, West Ham Fan TV, West Ham Till I Die, Clad and Hugh, everyone was there. Uh, with Karen Beatty, actually. Um, a pivotal moment, do you think, in the fan base for West Ham, maybe? I, I think it was absolutely huge, to be honest with you, because... I don't really think that there's too many other Premier League clubs that would have invited. Uh, Ex-employee, of course, was there as well. Um, West Ham world. I, I mean, basically, almost everybody was there from the West Ham blogging world. And it was instigated by the club who wanted to invite us in to find out the fans' opinions via us, not just to find out some opinions, but so as they could put some of our suggestions into practice, right? Yeah, we were in that room for about three hours with her. Um, it was very honest. I thought I thought we could ask anything we wanted. And we went into great depth about stewarding. Um, well, we all admit it's got better. We spoke about stewarding and about how the club are going to try and get up to 50 uh, sport liaison officers out there, uh, step by step, increasing the numbers. West Ham facing people when the supporters arrive at the ground. They're going to be West Ham people that they first see. Um, I felt like, well, having the quote, I can't remember what she said. It was very honest in the sense that the club admitted that they'd done quite a lot wrong in the sense of, or they could have done a lot better with the move and the stewarding, etc. And it was a bit of an eye opener, I think. I think it was a bit of an eye opener to sit in there and hear, especially Karen, because she gets a lot of stick from our fan base. She gets it the most, I think. Um, and people have their reasons, and I've given. I, I'm the first one to say I've been quite negative against Karen Beatty, but tonight was an eye opener. But what, do you, what, what about the stewards? Can you remember anything about the stewards? I mean, we have just come out of it. We were in there for three hours. So there was a lot to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing is that they're they're putting into practice what they've done wrong, and it wasn't a case of us being schmoozed either you know I mean we were able to speak honestly um, we got honest replies honest answers I mean we, as I say without going into to too much detail because it is just so fresh we've literally just come out of there we're, you can see we're stood outside the stadium there um, yeah I mean there's there's new things being implemented with the steward in I think the biggest thing is the fans are being listened to and, and I felt every time any one of us put a suggestion forward it was very much taken down but we weren't always told exactly what we wanted to hear to be honest with you I think if there was an honest answer that was needed then an honest answer um, was given but I was quite impressed with the big things as well as the little things that were going to be put into place to make it to make it better for the fans and it was quite clear with there's some upcoming things as well with with fans and supporters groups and things like that which they're clearly going to be listened to and I, I was I think if I took one thing away from that I was quite I didn't know how much of the small stuff Karen Brady did, the day-to-day -day stuff. Do you know what I mean? She seemed to know an awful lot about very, very small things. And um, there's a few bits and pieces. Again, we, we don't want to go into too much detail now because we've got to do a 10-minute video. It's whatever. It's 10 o'clock at night. So we've got to rush and get this uploaded and get trains home. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I was... I was quite pleased going forward that the lines of communication have been open between the club and the fans. I'm trying to think of what stuff the stewards are actually going to be in action. Like I said, we've got the SLOs. Um, they're trying to retrain um, up to part. They're not, not up to part. They're trying to retrain the stewards that are here that haven't dealt with a football cow before because we basically got told that they have the highest level of qualifications as a steward, but what they're missing in terms of a qualification, but it's not a qualification on paper, is the, the West Ham crowd, the West Ham fan in them. And they're trying to integrate that and what they are doing is they, they want all former Upton Park stewards back here they did say that you know they've, the club have got in contact and tried but so many don't reply etc and I suppose us as fans are trying to say well can the people that did love working for West Ham as a steward I, th I, think the, I think the thing was that when that was said about the old Upton Park stewards, the club said they have tried, but I think it wasn't a case of them just saying they've tried. They said, actually, well, do you know what? You try. We'll, we'll try again. You yeah. try. You help. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's all get together. And, and I, was, uh, I was quite impressed with that. And there seems to be 
a number of things certainly with a view to um, you know certain areas within the stadium which they certainly can feel that they can improve on and steward better and I think that was started to be implemented at, at Crystal Palace but as I say there were, there were a lot of people in that room you know um, Nicky and Ryan from West Ham Fan TV they'll obviously be putting um, a video up themselves which you'll need to, to give a watch I'm, uh, the boys sex drugs occult and cult I mean every, everybody was there and, and um, I think I think Quite a lot got put in motion today that, that can certainly help us going forward, certainly. We had an argument about the plus twos. We did have an argument. I, I think I think the club remained firm on that in the sense that they still think that they did it right. But she made her case that they couldn't please everyone and there was always going to be disappointed fans. Um, but it does sound like they're going to look into the pricing of some season tickets because there was a, uh, as a fan, they obviously personally affected by the pricing of a band one season ticket at the back of the east stand and they did jot down his seat details etc and they not, are going to have not, a not look just at. his seat, seat details I mean the little things actually as we were leaving they made sure they got his phone they didn't have to do that they could have just said yes at the meeting actually went got his phone I've got all his details and, and you know I mean little things that make me think actually you know the the things that need ironing out are going to be are going to be ironed out as, as I say I think that was a, a big moment really and something that the, it was nice for the club um to branch out as well and to reach out to everybody and we hope I mean certainly there was a, there was a lot of people sat around that um, I mean uh, Graham from Leeds Mother Brown was there I thought was very impressive today as well and everybody there was putting over opinions for the fans what the fans needed be it travel in and out and, and, and seating and ticketing the ticket office I mean so many things come up it's a bit overwhelming isn't it a lot of things came up today yeah I'm just trying to remember stuff so we can tell people what was said rather than who was there well, but maybe, like maybe we'll have to chat about it on the, on we the had, forum or we or had uh, one of the things Graham did say was a lot of people that necessarily didn't have the disabled badge or that to get the shuttle bus, but they were waiting around and the club are going to look into that. They didn't make any promises and the simple reason that they didn't want to make promises that they can't fulfil or they can't hold, so they'd rather promise nothing. And then, But the club are looking into things like that. Uh, I just try to think. Well, we just—I mean, we discussed big things and little things. I mean, you know, the, the seating um, came into it, the ticketing, big things like that. But even little things like—I mean, I, I pouring said, beer. Yeah, I mean, I said in my previous vlog, if you remember, I'd, if you anybody that watched it, I was queuing up for a beer, and I said, you know, why don't they just pour the pints of beer out so when we get there, and it will just cut queuing times down. Mentioned it, said, yep, yeah, no problem, we can do that. No, so there was there was lots of yeses and little things we didn't. You know, we spoke about the seating. Let's be perfectly honest with you, that seating's not going to be moved any further forward because of the roof. That's as close as it will go. So it wasn't like we were being told yes to everything. So as we would come along, you know, we were told no to some things, but also they, they seem willing to to help and do as much as they can to make the, the match day experience as as good as possible. Yeah, it was a, it was an argument about that seating. Well, it wasn't an argument. It was a firm no that the seating is what it is. It's not changing. They can't change. Yet. And when we spoke about the pricing of the retractable seat in, to be fair to Karen Bady, she kind of did well to say, well, this has got nothing to do with West Ham now. It's up to the stadium operators. We pay our rent, we we give them the catering money. Our deal is worth a lot more than the two and a half million a year that they get from West Ham. They get a hell of a lot more money. And it's up to them to fix it, and they are going to fix it. It's not up to us, etc. Um, but that, that that was paused. Well, it wasn't positive, but it's, it's good to get a, 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 a definitive answer. answer. Yeah, a, it's a good. It's, it's, there was no. There was no. Oh, we're going to see. It was. I oh, know the seating is not moving. It is what it is, etc. Um, we've got told they're going to be applying for the sixty thousand, the uh, sixty thousand capacity this week. So hopefully we'll find out about that soon. We've got a bit of assurances about block one one three one one four. Um, I think I think she'll listen. I think she'll listen to us. Well, we don't sit in there uh, there was one fan Sean sits in there but there was also people like ourselves were giving accounts of people that we've seen or heard and some of the stuff can be didn't seen before um, or heard about that they were certainly jotting down I think they're going to go take reference to it in that and I think they admitted that they were a bit heavy handed with Block 113 and you know we questioned why they're getting filmed and we got told it's because of the coin throw and it's just a sort just make sure it doesn't happen again which it hasn't and to be fair they admit that they admit that hasn't been any more coin thrown um, and so that's why that was but they were it was honest but I'm trying to think if there was other stuff I know I know we've just come out but it was three hours long but it was it's quite yeah I mean there's a lot I mean I think we're gonna to have to go home and sort of think it and, and process it for our brain all I would say is go on to knees up mother brown go on to West Ham fan TV go on to Claret and you just read everybody's right up West Ham well everybody was was there today I'm sure the podcasts will will be talking about it because there, there was an awful lot 
to come out of that today. But I, I certainly feel that going forward, there's a little bit more positivity about it and certainly they seem to know what they did wrong particularly in terms of stewarding the stewarding was the first i'll tell you now the stewarding was the first thing that came up in that meeting somebody uh, straight straight away said right who basically wants to open who's got the first thing to say nicky hawkins west ham fan tv bang straight away said i want to talk about stewarding and it went on from there and we spoke about that for quite a long time and a lot of answers were given a lot of assurances were given and they are really trying to put the old West Ham stewards in with the West Ham that, that was a clear thing if you remember that that's, that's just come to me now um, a lot of the old West Ham stewards are being put in with the West Ham fans and um and things like that just to try and give it a little bit more of a balance there's an understanding particularly um you know, with with the areas down down the bottom where they're you know singing a little bit more vocal, I think it's probably important for the stewards, particularly the new stewards, when the crowd was standing up and getting angry that we were losing three 0 I think it was important for those stewards to understand. Well, actually, we're losing three 0 The fans are not going to be happy, and that's why they're taking the West Ham fans and putting them in there because they just understand what West Ham fans are she, like. She understood why we want to stand. Uh, if Karen really understood, as much as she, she isn't a stander, she doesn't want to stand herself, she understood that we'd want to and she got her point of view um, and she, she listened and oh God, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, they're doing a couple of little things. Like you said, they're going to try and pour beers quicker at half time. They're going to put up shelving around the concourse for people to put their beer on. Um, Betway stands uh, was raised that there's not enough betway stands or betting, betting stands. Yeah, but, little, little um, so bet, it'll probably bet. be, it's likely going to be betway anyway. But uh, so they're going to look at trying to get more betting stuff. And you know, while it may not affect you, me, or you, people want betting, and it's good to see the, the club have said, well, actually, that's something we should be able to implement yeah. like that. And the shelving we should be able to implement like that. The boat, the beer, yeah, we should be able to do that. So they, they are doing it. This, I mean, this, was, yeah. I mean, this was this was a meeting about stewarding, about stadium access, about queuing, about your, your refreshments, food, uh, stall holders, um, all of that stuff that maybe is seems small stuff, and you think actually the club aren't going to bother with that. All the club club are going to bother with is the big stuff like signing players. There was none, none of that. It, it was actually all the stuff that affects us on a match day to and from Stratford. Um, I mean, media, yeah. media, we pulled up. We pulled up the Martin Samuel thing. Said, "What's going on here?" And to be fair, I think there was quite a commotion. I thought, I think a lot of the people in there did say to Brady that wasn't that was not good. Putting that article up, and she tried to say, "Well, she tried to." I suppose she said she hadn't read it. To be fair to her, she she did look like oh, I've not read this, and she tried to say, "Well, are we not meant to put it up?" And everyone said, "Well, no. This is why because fans felt like it was a dick at fans." And she wrote down. She wrote down oh. all the details. She, she wrote she down took, all the details and notes. stuff. And, um, and she took all the details. And it, it felt like they were listening. It did feel like she was listening. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the, what we will do? We will create a thread on our forum, hammerschat.com. Um, we will put the link below so you don't have to type it into the URL. Click in the link in the description. And on there, we will do our best to answer any questions. So if you've got any questions, or uh, we we will also put the links to. West Ham Fan TV, Knees Up Mother Brown, West Ham World. Anyone that was there tonight that does an everyone, article, everyone, I will, yeah. we will put a link to their relevant media in this one thread so you can find it all. It'll be pinned to the top of our forum for the rest of the week. But you can also discuss it with us. And it also, the club will be reading this stuff. The club will be reading it. But what I want to say, though, is a lot of times people say, oh, it's just club like harsh. And if you watch our channel, you'll know I'm not keen on the board, I'm not keen on Brady. What I will say is, though, the board, this, we haven't been told to put stuff out. We're doing this off our own back. So all those sites we just named might not do anything because it's up to them. They don't have to do anything. It's up to them what they share. And that's what was good. And the reason that people didn't know about this tonight is because the club don't want to be seen as doing this as a PR exercise. And it's up to the fans to do what they want. And they want this going forward to be some sort of, as Graham from these at Mother Brown said, a bridge between the fans and the club. And it feels like we've been shut off this, this long. It feels like we've been shut off and we've finally been allowed in, and we're allowed to say what we wanted in that room. At no oh. point did anyone get told you're not allowed to discuss that, etc. Brian Bubbles honestly. Magazine, Brian Williams is there for Blowing Bubbles Magazine. There'll be people we've forgotten, I do apologise. I mean, it was a room of, what would you say, 14, 10, 10 14, to 15, yeah, 10 to 15 West Ham, um, people you, you would, you would recognise. What, what I will also say, it's just come to me, we'll wrap this up in a second, because I'm running out of, I can't remember everything. Uh, it's nice to see. Jack Sullivan in there. He didn't speak. Jack Sullivan did not speak once. Well, he spoke a couple of times, but that was only when he was referenced to he got looked at as to give an opinion. But he sat there and he listened to fans. And it's good to see not only the current board, but what is supposed to be the future board and probably will be the future board one day. 
sitting in that room at such a young young age with a lot of you know grown men essentially. Yeah, or yeah. And, some of them pissed off with the club, and a, and a, and a lot of ego, a lot of egos. Let's yeah, be perfectly yeah, honest yeah, here. I mean, pissed off, you pissed know, off, pissed yeah, off West Ham fans yeah. about stuff. And he he sat in that room and listened to us all. And I've, I've got a lot of respect for him and Karen Brady for t- tonight, actually, um, for listening to us. And it feels like they have listened to us, and it was positive tonight. Everyone that came out of that room tonight, I, on, I think I can say on behalf of them all. Um, Everyone said it was positive, and also it was a pleasure to meet them, uh, because believe it or not, we do get on with them, all of them really, but we just don't meet them, and we met a lot of them tonight. Yeah. And it was an absolute pleasure to meet them, and hopefully this is the start of something new for West Ham, a new sort of way of communicating and getting answers. I mean, the one thing that she was very adamant about was, don't wait until the next meeting. If you've got a problem, if a fan's got a problem, tell the fans to get in touch with you. So if you've got a problem, tell us on our thread, tell us on the thread, because one, the club will be reading it anyway, but two, we will do our best to get answers for you. The club want us to go to them with these questions and stuff. And so you, you let so, us know. Sorry, I'm actually looking to see if it's still recording because it's outside, yeah, it's very, very dark. It's time for us to go, I think. It, it is, it is. One thing I would say, that the club seem to be um, appreciating that... Um, you know, the traditional way of dealing with it is, is newspapers, and that's how fans see facts. Fans used to have contact with the club in that way. I think the club now appreciate that actually fans are watching West Ham Fan TV and, and they're, they're, they're listening to forums and they're reading Clara and Hugh and listening to X and Sex, Drugs, Carlton Coles radio show and, and perhaps a couple even listen to us occasionally. So, you know, that's the way that I think fans are communicating and getting their news via West Ham. And I think it's a real, been a real breath of fresh air that the club have realised I, I think they realise that we've both got the same audience Yeah, their audience is our audience and our audience is their audience you know, if a Man City fan is reading the Mirror's article at West Ham who really cares at the end of the day he ain't turning up here for a Saturday afternoon we are and I think the club are starting to think well actually let's just forget about the outside world let's focus on West Ham let's focus on our fans let's focus on our club uh, let's see what we can do together to make it better for everyone and it feels like tonight's the first step and hopefully it's the first of many but um, Thank you for putting us, us gibbering on. I'm afraid I'm giving you much information about no. the meeting, but tonight we'll probably come up with stuff. We'll post it on the forum. We will post it on the forum. We'll also do a cup of tea later this week. Um, this meeting will probably come up in the cup of tea. Yeah. Um, the, the details will go up on social media. But make sure you subscribe to our channel. You won't miss it. Um, if you check out our channel and we've got a cup of tea planned, it'll be there, it'll be scheduled. I'll tell you when the next one is. Twitter, Facebook, it's all below. But the main place is the forum. Get on the forum. Everything's on the forum. Click the link below and we'll take you to everything from tonight's meeting. And thank you very much for listening to us waffle on. But um, it's a good night for me. Good night for me.